All right, Shalom before I start. And give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakachorash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Uh, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the Akim Wa Akwath, learning and teaching in truth and sincerity and in the video through the Spirit. And you have the phrase in the world uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? And this picture right here, this sums it all up. <laughs> You know, I just came across this, and you know, and immediately, you know, verses came to mind, y'all. This is what it all boils down to. This is what them two babies uh, that was born in the Middle East, you know, one a little bit funny looking, right? This is what all this is going to boil down to. Us versus them. Good versus evil. Light versus darkness. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai versus you know really and you know can't nobody obviously this is all the heavenly father show uh but you know the this the spiritual power versus the carnal power right and esau's gonna lose this horribly he knows this this right here is why he doesn't like us it, it, it is it's not just because we're dark skinned it's not just because you know you know we're physically blessed you know uh, muscles you know uh you, you know your johnson it is that that that's just you know all other shit that that's there we have the blessing of the kingdom to come and immortality and he does not he has been cursed to damnation and destruction that is what this boils down to and this picture sums it up all right he got his gun on his hip and america on his shoulder and we don't need none of that <laughs> we got the blessing of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the power imbued and given to us from the Heavenly Father by way of His Son's sacrifice. And we are going to be inconquerable, specifically the 144,000 men, 12,000 men out of each of the 12 tribes that are, gonna, that are going to be alongside the angels, all right, the archangels, and Yahweh Shai Himself reclaiming this world physically all right physically reclaiming this world Esau Edom knows that he's destined to lose this battle which is why he's over these years he's lied about the truth changed the image uh, images poison the water poison the food uh, uh, you know uh, uh, mis mishandled the scriptures changed names taken over land regions erased history Right, all because of this is all this is what this is what it's gonna boil down to us versus them, and they're gonna fucking lose. All right, so let's get some scriptures real quick. Uh, let's go to that Genesis 25, man. We gon' we we're, we're gonna win this in the end. Esau Edom knows this, and not only we're we gonna win it, we're going to be given power from the heavenly Father to win it. There is nothing He can create to stop us. Genesis 25 and 23. And the Lord said unto her, unto who? Uh, Rebecca, the mother of, as we're about to see, Jacob and Esau. All right, it says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men are people, shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. All right? We're two nations. We have two different mannerisms, two ways of life. Uh, one being stronger than the other, obviously, is who? Jacob. Right, and the elder shall serve the younger. Esau, Edom, went into subjugation under us. All right, and he broke that yoke for a minute after the time of David. And but he's going to go under that subjugation again, finally in the kingdom, unto his destruction. Okay. Now let's read a little bit. Verse uh, uh, twenty-four. It says, "And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled." Behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. All right, so you should already know the breakdown on this. All right, he didn't come out literally covered in hair. All right, babies don't aren't born, you know, covered in hair. He was red like garments that they would dye red back in this time. All right, which is why he was given the name uh, Ashashua. All right, wasted away is he? He was lacking his pigmentation. Jacob came out a normal little nappy-headed Negro baby, which is
which is why they had no need to make mention of his appearance. All right. Uh, we're going to jump down to verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was, in cunning, was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. All right, so let's go to this real quick. Y'all know that word. Should by now. Let's go to uh, Genesis. So you see the two... The two mannerisms of the people, you know, a homebody, Jacob, and a, and a outside demonic killer, <laughs> Esau. All right, verse uh, 27. Let's look at that word plain. Salakia. Coming on to the plain. Uh, Tom. Uh, or uh, it's like a thumb, T H A M, it says perfect, complete, one who lacks nothing in physical strength, beauty, etc., sound, wholesome, all right, an ordinary, quiet sort of person. So Jacob was an upright. He was a he was a goodly man, all right. He was a perfect man. He was a sound man. He was the type of man that you could leave your wallet next to, and you weren't gonna come back, you know, and have to pay. 1999 for the next 20 years each month <laughs> to get it back all right or come back and then find your whole house completely edomized it says complete morally innocent having integrity one who was mor morally and ethically pure so jacob was a young goodly man all right you saw edom he's not a good man he's a man of blood a man of murder a man of animosity, jealousy, hatred, bigotry, all these things. And this picture is a culmination of soon what's to happen. All right, so I'm going to flip through some of them. All right, and then and in the kingdom, this is what it's going to be. Our kids is going to be at peace, perfect, and set up good. No issues. All right, super powered up at birth. Another one, boom. <laughs> Ice grilling. That's what's coming. So now let's get some scriptures, y'all, dealing with the fact that uh so I'm just you know getting the, the origin, right? The these two young boys was born and and all of history has been centered around the events of them and their descendants. Alright, and what what was said that you know who's gonna get the victory and how they're gonna get the victory? Let's go to uh Isaiah 41, one of my favorites. I just got a couple that I'm going to go to. You know, nothing crazy or slick with it. The basic scriptures when you're dealing with this uh, topic. Isaiah 41 and uh, 15. It says, uh, what the hell is he doing? Isaiah 41 and 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing in instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. All right, so the Heavenly Father, he's going to restore us, the Israelites, the males, our power. And we're going to be physically used to put the nations into subjugation. They are the mountains that are going to be beaten as chaff. They're the governments and organizations that are high now, but will be subjugated by the chosen people, the Israelites. Jeremiah 51 and 19. Yeah, we'll start at it. It says, the portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. All right, a well-known scripture. So, you know, we're, we're the forerunners. We're the, when you look up that word former, you know, one of the definite, definitions in there, hey, we, we invent all the good things of society. They're literally, right? You saw Edom takes the credit, but we're the people who put it together. All right, we're, the, we're that chosen nation whom the Heavenly Father has his eyes on. And is going to uh, recover soon. All right. Verse 20 says, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. Uh, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. All right. Literally, the Israelites, the men, the chosen elect men, are going to be tools used to break down this man's kingdom. Literally, given that spiritual power to go to war with this man to take him down 
verse 21 and with thee will i break in pieces the horse and his rider and with thee will i break in pieces the chariot and his rider all right horses represents uh power all right soldiers who are upon horses uh come on soldiers that were upon horses were you know higher ups they weren't just regular peon nobodies so this represents the fact that we're going to be taking down the higher ups of the heathen especially and specifically esau edom he's going to be pulled out of power and down from his high seat and made to suffer loss and defeat verse 22 with thee also will i break in pieces man and woman and with thee will i break in pieces old and young and with thee will i break in pieces the young man and the maid so we're not going to discriminate based on age weight height or sex and gender all of the heathen will be put in subjugation under the children of israel the same way that they subjugated us without discrimination or mercy okay let's get some more let's go to that uh micah now that micah that's the good stuff micah five you know what no let me get uh actually let me get horn let's see Is that Micah or is that uh yeah okay four yep Micah four and yep Micah four and thirteen it says arise and thresh uh O daughter of Zion for I will make thine horn iron and I will make thy hooves brass and thou shalt beat in pieces many people and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth so not only are we going to be raised up and given the power, the physical ability, right, by, by way of supernatural engagement, uh, we're going to be given it to take this man down. We're going to force him to be under us and to give him his resources. The same way that he took resources from us and made us to be tribute to him, it's going to happen to them now, right? We're going to be raised up. That's what it means. It says to make our horn iron. Right now, we have no horn. Right now, we have no power, which is why we have to pay taxes. Uh, you, you owe IRS this. Uh, you know, you have to go to work. You have to clock in. You have to go take your kids, register them, do this, do that, driver's license. Well, that's going to be disabandoned. Soon, we will no longer be under his authority because we will break his authority at the return of Yahweh Shai him being our champion leading the way us following behind cracking dome <laughs> uh let's look at that word horn there mm, where is it at where is it at thine horn yep quran uh horn strength flask horn raise the light hill right and this is that same word horn uh you know used in uh what verses? What uh, uh, in that uh, Habakkuk? All right, but this in this instance, it's not dealing with the rays from the chariots. This is dealing with our strength. Literally, as a nation, it will be made iron. All right, what is one of the properties of iron? Being hard to break. All right, damn near indestructible. So we're going to be like iron. He will not be able to break us any longer. spiritually uh the fifth one yep so another one and then when you read in the scriptures uh second maccabees it describes i'm gonna have to grab it but it, you know what fuck it i'll grab it right now it describes angels wearing golden armor let me get that uh just to prove it let me get that second maccabees 11 and 8 you're gonna have dark skinned men wearing you know the angels right you know hey some of them gonna have gold some of them you know white whatever colors but this isn't just a figment of some random guy's imagination, you know, the brother who put it together. These are how men are described in the Bible. Israelites and angels, dark-skinned men, hair of wool, all right, golden armor, things as such. Second Maccabees 11 and 8. Uh, it says, uh, matter of fact, I'll start at verse 7, because you had a battle going on in the 
the Maccabees needed help, and the angels came down and helped. Second Maccabees 11 and 7, it says, Then Maccabeus himself, first of all, took weapons, exhorting the other that they would jeopard themselves together with him to help their brethren. So they went forth together with a willing mind. And as they were at Jerusalem, there appeared before them on horseback, one in white clothing, shaking his armor of gold. So he had white clothing on and armor gold over the top of it, a white garment on with gold and armor. That is biblical. And there is nothing that this man's tanks, bombs, Apache helicopters, uh, uh, you know, VTOL helicopters, uh, 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 A-10 Thunderbirds, M-16, none of that. All right, M-10 Abram tank, none, none of it. it. None of it is going to be able to stop us. We will literally become immortal killing machines. And Esau is the target. And there's, there, he don't, this little flag and shoulder patch, bitch, we gonna, <laughs> they not even gonna be able to find that left of you. All right, after the elect, Lord will and I, and you sincere brothers be a part of our elders and apostles, right? The men who have been laboring in this, this is a part, this is a part of what we want. We wanna be with Yahweh Shai leading the charge, taking this man down, Adawan Ratazah, right? Esau's not going to be able to stand against this. He's going to put up a fight like it tells us in 2nd Edgers, but he's going to lose miserably <laughs> like it tells us in 2nd Edgers. Uh, let me get this as well. Let me get, uh, yep, 2nd Maccabees 10 and 29. But when the battle waxed strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five comely men upon horses. These were angels with bridles of gold, and two of them led the Jews. So these angels appeared in an apparition, right? upon horses and the bridles of gold you know the, the the reins the strings all that basically everybody was they was decked out in gold themselves and the horses right and then it says what and two of them led the jews so two of the angels in particular was leading the israelite men into battle all right that was fighting against the heathen trying to take us out verse 30 and took maccabeus betwixt them and covered him on every side weapons and kept him safe, but shot arrows and lightnings against the enemies, so that being confounded with blindness and full of trouble, they were killed. So right there, the angels were literally defending Judas Maccabeus in combat, and, you know, striking the heathen, hitting them with projectiles, lightning and blinding motherfuckers, y'all. And this is just a light, this is just, the angels can do a lot more damage, but they, you know, they was just flexing a little bit and helping Judas Maccabeus out. Blinding motherfuckers on the battlefield. You go blind on the battlefield, your head is coming off in a couple seconds from not too long after. That's the type of power we're going to be rolling in with. Esau Edom knows this. That's what. That's why he's put chemicals in the food to lessen the sperm count. Uh, 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 got our women hooked on these goddamn uh, you know wigs and hair care products, destroying their goddamn scalp and brain cells. Uh, that's why, you know, the kids is eating fucking beefaronis and goddamn, uh, you know, Campbell's chicken noodle soup. He, he's lessening and trying to break down our people, but ultimately it isn't going to work because we're going to be given new bodies in the first place. So nothing that he does to us carnally on this side is going to have any effect. He's still going to lose at the end of it all. It's all going to have been in vain. All right, Micah 5 and 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many peoples, as a lion among the beasts of, of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. That's what's coming to Esau Edom when we are given that horn, when we are given that power from on high. We're going to rip and tear through him the same way that is if you dropped a lion off in a sheep. Uh, in a sheepfold at night, when you wake up in the morning, all you're going to see is one hoof. <laughs> that lion ain't going to leave, that, that lion ain't going to leave not a hoof. He going to, you feel me? Ain't going to be nothing left. I'm talking about even the babies is gone. Well, that's the type of capabilities and the type of rage and fury we're going to pursue these heathen with. And now America's going to be utterly destroyed. Right, so this is mainly uh, now. You know, we're gonna see. Is the Lord gonna let some of us get spiritual power here? Uh, you know, not the new bodies, but just little taste of spiritual powers. You know, some speed, some strength, 
you know, doing a little bit of this, doing a little bit of that. We're gonna see. Uh, but we know as a for you know of a surety the fact that the elect at, at the bombing of America, the nuclear destruction, um the chosen here in America are gonna go up and be given those new bodies. And the 144,000 men, they're gonna come back down and be the wrecking ball force teamed up with Yahweh and the angels going from country to country. Landmass to landmass, subjugating the heathen. All right. <clears throat> Micah 5 and 15. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. <laughs> Fit, uh, fittingly so. They're going to feel the wrath of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And they're not going to win at all. Esau, Edom, he's put the world into fear with his technology, with his capabilities. But he's not going to win against Yahweh Shai. He's going to catch this fucking fade. He's going to catch this. He's going to get faded out. Tanks is going to get sent flying. Uh, 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 you know. Brothers, hey, we, hey, we going we gonna to see. You know, we can only imagine what we're, we're going to be capable of. But we just saw, you know, the angels were shooting lightning. So we're going to have capable. Hey, we're going to be able to manipulate the elements. Time and space. Breathing fire. Uh, 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 you know, crushing motherfuckers, just all kinds of things. None of which Esau's carnal blessing will be able to handle or overtake or resist. He's going to fall to the might of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the Lord of hosts, the true leader of an army. All right. Second Edris, uh, I'm going to get it. He's going to put up a fight and he's going to lose miserably. Second Edris 13 and um, 8. It says, and after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. Um, oh, you know, I should have started. Uh, this is all good. But this is dealing with the chariot, with Yahweh Shai's chariot destroying. All right. It says uh, he neither lift up his hand nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but I, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden an innumerable multitude slack it. Upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. All right, so right there, Esau, Edom, his multitude, and the other countries, their armies, they're going to be destroyed by Yahweh Shai. All right, and the proof of that, you go down. Um, um, start at verse 30, so going to just 13 and 30. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, and one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. So World War Three is going to be in you know full swing at the return of the Lord, right? Uh, the nation's going to be fighting everyone against each other. And then what? Verse 32. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. So right there, at the return of the Lord, you know, the heathen going to realize, oh, shit, you know, like that meme. They're going to try to fight against them, you know, to maintain what little piece of the pie they're fighting for. And it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. All right. Uh, what was that? Verse 34 and then... Uh, and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting, but he shall stand upon the top of Mount Sion. So, yeah, so they're going to try to overcome and they're going to lose miserably. All right. They're going to lose miserably. It's, it's not even going to be comparable. All right. We're going to be kicking fools in the space, throwing motherfuckers in the depths of the ocean, calling Leviathan in. <laughs> All kinds of things. And this right here, I, I like this picture too. This shows that this is ha this has all been orchestrated by the Heavenly Father. And it's going to be us versus them in this game. And we're going to win it. Undisputedly, undoubtedly. Without fail, <laughs> we're going to win. 
our realm, all right, Jacob versus Esau. He's going to lose his technology versus the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And who was promised to win? Second Edger 6 and 9. I'll start at 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we're going to win this. He's going to he's gonna end and lose. We're going to win and conquer and take over. That's how this rolls and wraps up. There's no, there's no alternative. There's no, you know, oh, maybe the angels, you know, if you, you know, stand on your left foot and ring this bell and then hold your nose and then, you know, then you shoot them, then they'll die and stay dead for no, nothing. Ain't no, ain't no cracks in the armor of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right. He's going to lose this battle miserably. All right, I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechachurash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the Akim, Wa'akwath, learning and teaching in truth and sincerity. Shalom.